Come on. Come on. There he is. Oh, he came right at the boat. I thought I lost him. He came right at me. He's still coming right at me. Maybe this isn't as big a fish as I thought. Let's talk about summer fishing. That fish right there, Folsom Lake, earlier this week, went out by myself. I was, I was running some test gear, um, kind of just messing around, honestly, doing some stuff that I normally wouldn't do with clients in the boat when we're guiding out there, but some stuff I definitely has been on my mind I wanted to try. So it was hot. I mean, that day is about 100 degrees. Water temperature on the surface is 80, 82 on any given day. It is definitely the doldrums of summer and it's tough to find active fish. Now they have to feed at some point. So we know on any given day, there are some fish somewhere in the lake that are feeding. It's just a matter of knowing when and where that's gonna be. And honestly, um, we've struggled a little bit later in some of the days just to get a bite because we have very small bite windows out there and uh, had some you know, limited success on small pockets of gear in certain places at the right time, but um, I was really looking to kind of expand that. So um, here's what we're doing. We're fishing structure, and I think you've probably all heard that before, but let's talk in depth about what that really, really means. So um, trolling for trout structure is a little bit different than what that would mean if you were to ask a bass guy what he's doing on structure. Bass fishermen think structure is, you know, maybe a lay down, a bush, lily pads, something visible from the surface and fairly shallow water that the fish are orienting to. Sometimes it might be like a rock or a rock pile, something offshore, deeper water. Um, but they're usually not talking about structure like we're talking about for trout, which are, you know, hard bottom ridges on the bottom of the lake, 120 feet deep. That's not normally what a bass guy would say. If you asked a stream or river fisherman what kind of structure they're fishing, they're going to tell you the big rock in the middle of the river that diverts current, maybe creates an eddy. Maybe there is a tree laying down uh, or a bend in the river could certainly or creek stream could certainly be um, a piece of cover that they might they might consider structure but that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about trolling structure for trout so um i'm going to show you what i use to try to find areas to concentrate on that i know are the most likely to hold fish and specifically we're really looking for areas that the fish can corral bait so we're kind of looking for bait before we're looking for actual trout or marks on the screen but once you find one they go hand in hand all right, let's talk about where we're fishing. Folsom Lake, big body of water. It's really deep, a couple hundred, 250 feet deep in some spots. There's two very distinct river channels. So um, here, I'm gonna pop up a map real quick. This is a contour map of Folsom Lake, and this is exactly the area where I was fishing. You saw me just catch a fish right in this area, and uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. But right here, Folsom Lake, this is kind of the corner of the lake I was fishing, kind of the southeast corner. Um, and you can see, highlight in blue here, this is the main river channel. So along that edge, it's 220 feet deepish or so right here on the map. Uh, a lot of guys roll out off the trailer. They get right in the middle, find that trailer, uh, find that, find that deep contour in the river channel and they follow it all day long. And you might catch a fish in there. You're probably not going to see a whole lot of bait. You're probably not going to mark a whole lot of fish. Any fish moving through that area, specifically trout or, or landlocked salmon that we're targeting out there right now, they're just using it as a highway. They're not, they're not doing any feeding there. If you hook one or catch one, I, I, I really think it's just absolute random chance and it's gonna be really, really challenging to duplicate those results. So um, we wanna focus on areas where consistently hold fish, not just randomly hold fish. So when you look at a contour map like this, we want steep drop-offs, and particularly we want them in kind of the depth range where we think the fish are holding, which in our case is between 75 and 90-ish feet. So, so we're looking for deep walls in 75 to 90 feet of water. So let me highlight some of those deep walls and what they look like here. So there you go. Contour lines very close together on the map. That's going to show you where kind of the steeper structure is underwater. So if we zoom in on this a little bit, there you go. I'm just gonna zoom in, here's the channel. 
And so now you can start to see that those contour lines get a little bit more spread out and um, you can start to read the numbers on the screen, you know, where, where the detail is on how deep each of those things are. So um, as you look at this here, you can see a couple of spots in particular that there's pretty deep walls. And if you look at the little numbers, you can see that they're anywhere from 50 to about 100 feet deep. That's in our range, that's perfect. So that's what we're looking for. And the, again, the closer those little ridges are together, the little contour lines on the map, the steeper that, that drop is. Okay, so that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so let's zoom all the way into exactly where that fish was caught in the beginning of the video. Um, this is the area I was fishing. So right here, you can see on this section, there are two very distinct walls or areas where there's a steep drop off. Um, and that's noted by the contour lines very close together. And I'm gonna put yellow on them across the top of the ridges so you can still see the contour lines. So um, these areas go from about 60 feet down to 90 feet, and then they go from 50 feet down to about 100 feet. That's ideal, that's exactly in the range we're talking about. Remember, we wanna be 75 to 95. So those walls or those ridges under the water are exactly where we wanna be. Now this particular spot right here is a very, very common shape that we see on contour maps and it's called a horseshoe for, for obvious reasons. This is exactly what we're looking for. This is 100% this is the contours that you wanna find at your local lake and really concentrate on. And this is literally exactly where I caught that fish. So mark that with the blue triangle there right in the middle. Now what makes this special? Well, think about it. If you're a fish and you're down about 80 feet, say where that blue triangle is, it's very easy to corral bait up against that wall, okay? The bait has nowhere to go. It, it's basically trapped inside the horseshoe or inside the U where it has nowhere to go at all and the bait will continuously be balled up there. Um, and fish will roll in and feed and then roll out and then the bait stays and more fish will feed and roll in and roll out. So this is it, this is our party spot, game on right here. So um, how do you tackle this? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. Let me talk about the first way you don't wanna do it. And this is really common for a lot of guys that are a little bit hesitant to drop their downriggers and equipment down right close to the bottom and risk losing it. And that's understandable, but, um, but that's what it's gonna take in some situations to get these fish. But if you come from this direction, from shallow out towards deep, it's really, really difficult to lower your gear right on top of that triangle when you come over the ridge. So um, that's not the greatest way to approach it. Now, another way to approach it, which honestly is, is something I'll do occasionally to kind of see, to take the lay of the land and kind of mark fish and see what's going on here, is I will come typically from shallow water out to deeper water this way and follow kind of parallel to that deep wall. So that gives you an opportunity to see if there's bait on it, see if there's fish holding on it. And uh, you know, you can make a quick pass through there without kind of disturbing what you consider your primo area with a whole bunch of passes and, and spending a whole bunch of time in there um, and get a lay of the land. But really, really the way you wanna tackle this is you want to make very, very tight circles in this area just like this, all right? Go right around that triangle. And the first one, you're probably gonna to wanna to be right at the bottom of the wall, maybe you know 90 feet deep with your gear, right on the bottom edge, and then move up a little bit. Move it up into 80 feet of water on the second pass, and then maybe 70 feet, so you're halfway up that ridge as you move along. Now, when you do that, yes, downrigger balls are gonna be very close to the bottom of the lake. There might be some rocks down there, there might be a tree, there might be something you can snag in, but that you might lose something and that's okay. The reality is that's where the fish are. That fish that you saw me catch in the beginning, I was literally bouncing the bottom on this wall, this exact wall, about three quarters of the way down in 86 feet of water. Um, and and I thought when it when the release went off that it actually just popped a release and then all of a sudden the rod buried and took off and, and fish on and game on and there you go. So, um, you know, you gotta be able to run these and feel pretty confident that you can get your gear close to the bottom. That doesn't mean you have to beat your gear into the bottom and drag it along and lose it. You just have to have some confidence to get your gear in there. All right, so that's the type of areas you wanna concentrate on. And uh, this one produced a number of fish for me that day. You, you saw the biggest one of the day, which was pretty cool. And it continued to produce every time I went over it. I'd do two or three passes, leave it, let it rest, go find another spot like this and come to it a half hour, an hour later, and, and, and boom, the fish would still be there. Or the, the bait would still be there holding different fish, which is, which is really what you're looking for. Um, I'm pretty confident I can hit this spot you know, multiple times over the next two weeks, three weeks, unless conditions really change. And it is always going to produce some amount of fish or at least 
a bite for me because the bait is there. Um, and that's what you want. So I show you these cool maps and there's a couple different ways you can find these types of resources for yourself. This particular one I'll put down at the bottom as a link is a free online resource. Um, it has maps all over the US. You can zoom in really far on them and see contour lines. This is what I'll do the night before I go out fishing. I'll just zoom over the map, scroll around the areas that I think might want to start at. Um, there might be some areas of the lake I don't know very well and I'll use this type of mapping feature to kind of figure those out and get an idea where I want to fish before you get out on the water. And that's kind of doing your homework before you get there. Yikes. Um, the second option is I rely heavily on, on the mapping system that is in our Humminbird Helix fish finder on the boat. You know, we have an updated Navionics map. It's really, really good. You can zoom into one foot, one foot contours. It doesn't take, it's not very hard, as you can see from the demo maps I have here, to, to look at it at a glance and kind of know where those ridges and where those areas are. And then it's just a matter of picking the ones that are in the right depth. So that's a great resource. Third resource that I absolutely love, that's a little bit more challenging to use, but I bet you can find it pretty easily, is one of these. Um, this is a map book of all of the maps, all the big, excuse me, a map book of all the big lakes in California. It has Folsom, there's Folsom there, and if you zoom in a little bit, that is exactly the area where that fish was caught. Now, obviously the contours on this map aren't quite as detailed. It doesn't show all the fine ridges. Um, in fact, it doesn't look 100% like the horseshoes even here, but at least it gives you an area where it shows some changes on the bottom that if you can get out and, and spend some more time kind of exploring, I'll bet you find what you're looking for. So that's basic structure fishing. Find the structure, find the bait, find the fish. That, that's what it's all about this time of year. And don't be afraid to get out there in the heat and, uh, and catch some big fish. I really appreciate you guys watching this. I hope it helps you out. Um, we really appreciate you guys' support. Obviously, stores behind me here. I, I just happened to take a break talking to you guys about this while I'm filling orders for the day. So if you ordered something in the last couple of days, it's, it'll be here. It'll be in the mail tomorrow. Um, I really appreciate the support and uh, hope to see you guys on the water. If you have any questions at all, make a comment down below. You can email me through the website. You can text us on the, on the office line anytime you want. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer that stuff whenever it comes in and often, often get back to you pretty quick. So um, appreciate it. Thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you out there in the water.